55. Acetic acid, which is CH3CO2H, can form a dimer, which is CH3CO2H2, in the gaseous phase. And then they give us the balanced equation, showing that if you have two acetic acids, you can fuse them together to form a dimer. Now, the dimer is held together by two hydrogen bonds with a total strength of 66.5 kilojoules per mole of the dimer. What a beautiful drawing. <laughs> At 25 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for the dimerization is 1.3 times 10 to the third pressure in ATM. What is the delta S for the reaction? Okay, so essentially, we have to find out what that change in entropy is. And they give us a bunch of things, right? They give us this total strength of the dimer. They tell us that it's at 25 degrees Celsius, so we're at room temp. And they give us the equilibrium constant. Now, we're, sol we're trying to solve for a delta S, right? So ultimately, I think of formulas in which I have a delta S. And that's this formula right here, right? Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now, do we know any of this information? Well, if we're trying to solve for delta S, we know that this is going to be the variable X. So that means that I need to know these other three things. Now, the temperature, T, 25 degrees Celsius. But remember, when we're using this formula, it has to be in Kelvin. So let's first just convert the 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. And it's pretty easy, right? Celsius to Kelvin, we could just add 273. More specifically, you could add 273.15, which is what I'll do just to get a more accurate answer. So when you add those two, you get 298.15. And that's in Kelvin. So my temperature, I know, 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, so now I'm down to delta G and delta H. Now, they're talking about uh, the dimers being held together by two hydrogen bonds with a total strength of 66.5 kilojoules per mole of dimer. This has to be one of the values, right? Well, is it the Gibbs free energy or is it the enthalpy? Does it have to do with spontaneity or does it have to do with how much heat is in those bonds? When you're talking about bonds, right, and strength of bonds, that has to do with heat because there's a certain amount of heat that is held in bonds. So this 66.5 kilojoules per mole, that's secretly the delta H value. So I know that the delta H is going to be 66.5. Now, if we want to put the units as kilojoules per mole. Okay, beautiful. And now let's find out that delta G value. Now, they didn't tell me what it was, so we're stuck here. But they gave me the equilibrium constant, right? They gave me a K value. That's the equilibrium constant. It's a capital K of 1.3 times 10 to the third. So I know that I have a K value of 1.3 times 10 to the third, but how can I use that? Is there a formula that links a equilibrium constant with the delta G? And yes, there is, it is this one. So now I'm gonna be using this formula. Delta G, knots just means standard that you're using 25 degrees Celsius, AKA room temp. So the delta G equals negative R times T ln of k. So let's see, delta G. And if we want to put that notch in there, you can. You don't have to. But it's the two values, ln of k. Now, we know what the k value is. We just said that it was 1.3 times 10 to the third. The temperature we know, it's room temp, and we need to put it in Kelvin, which we already did. That's 298.15. And we have the R value because the R value is always a constant number. It's 8.314. Now, if we're using 8.314 for this formula, the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So that's why the temperature has to be in Kelvin. And when we get that delta G value, it's going to be in joules. So let's put in the 8.314. The great thing about this formula is that you could plug this all into Calci and the calculator will understand what's going on. So delta G equals negative 8.314, whoop, 8.314 times 
times the ln, natural log, of 1.3, and now I'm going to say second comma, that's the EE button, that means times 10 to the, so I just have to put a 3 there. And there you go, negative, so it's a spontaneous, 17,773.42927, and this is in joules, specifically joules per mole. So now, when you're coming over here, we have a delta S, which is X, and we have a G value. So the G value is going to be in joules, right? This is this value. So there's a discrepancy here. I have joules for my G, and I have kilojoules for my H. I'm only allowed one unit. Is it going to be kilojoules? Is it going to be joules? What's easier? Well, keep in mind that the S values, the um, the ideal, not the ideal, but the standard unit for for delta S is the entropy, is joule per mole times Kelvin. So it's not kilojoule per mole times Kelvin. It's always joule. So before I even plug into this formula, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that kilojoule and convert it into joules per mole because then I have joules, I got joules, and then I can solve for joules. So, let's see. Kilojoules to joules, all we have to do is just times by 1,000. Similarly, you could just take the decimal and move it over to the right three spots. So this will be 66500. So 66,500 joules is going to be the new delta H. And now I can use that formula to solve for delta S. So let's see, I got negative... 17773.42927. I don't want to round because that, that wasn't the final answer. Equals 66500 minus the temperature. So that's the 298.15. And then times by X, right? So maybe I'll just put an X value here. Okay. So... And before we do this math, I just want to make sure that this delta H value, I did put down 66,500, right? But I didn't really necessarily state whether it was exothermic or endothermic. So don't get tricked up, guys. They said that the total strength of the bond was 66.5 kilojoules per mole. Now, just know that when bonds are held together, right, when they're holding on and it's, it's a bond, that bond will always be exhibiting a, um, an exothermic amount of energy, meaning that the, the kilojoules per mole is always going to be exothermic, that when it breaks, it will, you know, it will uh, give off heat. So this 66.5 kilojoules, that's a delta H value, but this, since it's the strength of the bonds, that's always going to be exothermic. So... Even though they specifically didn't say negative 66.5, we need to know that the total strength of bonds, if they're being held together, it's always held together in the exothermic fashion. So this would be technically a negative 66.5, a negative 66,500, and a negative 66,500. And now we can do the math. Did anybody catch that? Good thing, right? But there we go. We always catch our mistakes and then we're ready to proceed. So now let's get rid of this. So I'm going to plus 66, 500 on both sides. So I'm going to take the value that I have and I'm going to plus 66500. Zero, zero. I am not going to round because that's not the final answer. So 48726.57073 equals a negative 298.15 times by X. What we got to do is just divide by the uh, temperature, right? Negative 298.15, negative 298.15. This goes bye-bye. Now I'm just going to take this answer and divide by negative 298. 0.15, and we get x equals negative, and we'll do, I guess, three sig figs, 163 
and that's joules per mole times Kelvin. And that's what the X value was, the entropy. So the entropy, delta S, is, and we'll say notch because it was standard, negative 163 joules per mole times Kelvin. And there you go. Okay. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. And thank you for being part of the community. All right. Um, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for, you know, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. Um, the channel is growing and it's just amazing to see how, how much this channel is being used for you guys learning in your classes. So keep up the awesome work and I will talk to you soon. All right. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.